Texas legislators approved a tax cut to increase homestead exemptions and send money to schools so property taxes can be lowered. The homestead exemption increase from $40,000 to $100,000 was then approved by Texas voters this week by an overwhelming majority. Here to break down what this might mean for us, Raymond Robertson, a professor at the Bush School of Government. Raymond, thank you so much for taking some time speaking with us today. Always a pleasure, Alex. Okay, let's get to this. This is an $18 billion property tax cut. Um, we know it has the homestead exemption increase. Uh, mm -hmm. What exactly does that mean? Well, what it means is they increase the exemption from $40,000 to $100,000, which means if you have a house that's worth more than $100,000, you're only taxed on the amount that's above $100,000. Before, you were taxed on everything above $40,000, which meant you were paying a lot more taxes on the value of your house. So now people would be paying a lot less taxes. Uh, we all know that you know property tax cuts was a big, big component of this year's legislature, of this legislative session. Um, what does this mean, though, for Texas homeowners, uh, for their tax rates this year and then next year? I know Brazos County sent out, uh, hey, here's what your what your taxes are if Prop 4 passes. Prop 4 has now passed. That's right. That's what they get to pay. Mm -hmm. That's right. So they wanted to make sure that tax, um, the taxes went into effect as quickly as possible. So homeowners should be seeing relief very quickly, as a matter of fact. Uh, that is that is good news for homeowners. Mm -hmm. uh, for renters, on the other hand, not so great news because uh, while this is for people's primary residence, this uh, homestead exemption, uh, if you have a rental property, if you're the owner of a rental property, uh, you don't get to take part in the homestead exemption because it has to be your primary residence. But you did say that there is something else for uh, people who have rental properties that own rental properties and it may or may not benefit those who rent from those rental properties. Yeah, that's exactly right, Alex. What they did was they increased or they limited the amount of appreciation allowance on those rental properties to about 20%. So that if the property value increases, the taxes won't increase necessarily the full amount if that value increases by more than 20%. Now, does this mean that the people renting the property will get that same benefit of lower taxes? Well, it depends on how generous the owners really are in passing those benefits along. That's something that I, I think is very interesting. It's something, I, you know, if you know your landlord your you know the the person that owns the property that you're at a conversation that should certainly be had look i know you're getting a, a cut here you're getting a break please pass it on um we do know that this homestead exemption it means that school districts will get a bit of a boost too um which could in turn lead to an increase in teacher salaries or just more money for them um the domino effect of you know a homestead exemption is there anything else that might be similarly affected by this well, the thing about the school district financing is that they are going to substitute locally collected taxes for money from the state. And the state's able to do that this year because they have the surplus. Uh, but the surplus was largely based on growth and COVID money, which might not be permanent. So mm. it really shifts the funding to Austin, basically, to centralize it rather than having it locally controlled. So it could be affecting school funding into the future. Yeah, uh, we talk about, you know, not everything is going to be positive. It's it's a hundred thousand dollar homestead exemption. It will have uh, uh, certainly there are some positives with it, but it seems like anything uh, in the economy with some good. There is some bad. Uh, what is the some bad that comes with this good? Yeah, the only real concern is that they have a surplus this year and they're replacing the, uh, the way they're funding the money with the surplus money. The surplus is temporary, but the tax cut is permanent. So in the future, if schools need more money for teacher salaries or whatever, they're now much more dependent on uh, the state of Texas giving them that money. So in the future, we might not have a surplus and it might be harder for schools to get the money that they need. This may not be something that you know, but a surplus, obviously, I think since I've been here, Texas has been operating with a surplus budget. Uh, it, it, when was the last time that they may not have had a surplus budget? Well, it was when the, uh, and I'm not sure of exactly the year, sure. right? But it was when the economy was in a recession again, and that was um, maybe even a decade ago or more, yeah. so maybe 15 years ago. I mean, but I'm not sure about exactly the timing sure. of that. But, you know, the reason why we have the surplus now is because of the growth and we had this COVID influx. So things are going great in Texas in the economy right now. So would a constitutional amendment, uh, would, was that the right call to, to make here, to, to amend the Constitution for this homestead exemption, given that, we are in a certain set of circumstances now versus uh, what could be in the future? 
Yeah, so Governor, Governor Abbott was very convinced that we had to lower these property taxes, and he made several attempts to do that in the legislative session, and they didn't work out. So this was the one way he was able to fulfill that promise back to the voters. So that's how it worked out. Professor Raymond Robertson with the Bush School, thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure, Alex. Always fun to see you.